Hello, and welcome back to Satisfactory Outposts in the Desert. Uh, I'm still on top of the aluminum outpost. Between episodes, uh, I decided that I really needed, I really wanted to um, to split up the incoming and outgoing products of the outpost, and so I just extended the, the roof on the other side of the outpost, and now it's extended on both sides of this really uh, narrow aluminum outpost. And we've got the incoming products on the left, outgoing in the center and then for uh, the other miscellaneous products will be the, the plastic that we're making here uh, the crystals that are coming directly from the quartz outpost and then the radio control units which we're shipping directly to the motor outpost uh, those are on a, a third rail line and we're just going to call this the aluminum outpost station not incoming or outgoing uh, one reason that they probably this change, you know, I was never really happy with the way that they looked in line. I thought, you know, it's good to know that you can connect them directly like that and it'll still function. But it didn't really look that great. And also, I realized that, um, you know, upon looking at the recipes that we unlocked, the alternate recipes, for um, radio control units, we needed to deliver supercomputers to this outpost. So, um, we weren't going to have the space, uh, you know, along the, the width of the outpost to accommodate the extra two freight platforms. And so it just made more sense to spread them out. And I think it looks better spread out anyway, rather than in, in one straight line. So um, we've got, you know, ingots in the bottom. Those are being combined with the aluminum ingots to make the alkaline aluminum sheets. Supercomputers, which will be used uh, in the the automation of radio control units, and then the tops, the copper sheets that we'll use when we're making heat sinks. This is the in or the outgoing line. Uh, this belt will be filled with the alkaline aluminum sheets that are left over after being, um, you know, turned into heat sinks. And then over here for the aluminum outpost train. Uh, the first station again is the plastic that we're making here. It's probably empty right now. Yeah, it's a little bit. We're not making a ton of plastic. Uh, this will be the crystal that's coming directly from the quartz station, and the, the final freight platform will be radio control units that we're shipping out. So let's set up this this rail line here. This is going to be the aluminum locomotive. It's going to start at the crystal outpost. And this is, it's not quartz incoming or quartz outgoing, it's just called crystals. Here we go. From there it's going to come, I believe, uh, from, from the crystal outpost, it's coming here to the aluminum outpost station. Uh, so it'll drop off the crystals, it will pick up plastic and radio control units. It's going to drop those radio control units off at the radio control units station. That's in the center of the, the motor outpost. And then it's going to head to electronics incoming to drop off the plastic. And if we've set this up right, fingers crossed, um, you know, there won't be any mixing of products with other stations or other freight platforms. So let's turn the autopilot on and get that started so we can have some crystals alert. Now let's head down to the floor below and work on setting up the automation of heat sinks and radio control units. Oh, over here. I had to move the, uh, the hyper tool off to the side here. Oh, what I did do um, between episodes also was I handcrafted um, the parts necessary for two Mark III miners. Don't recommend that. You need, you know, radio control units and heat sinks and turbo motors, and it's just it's not fun to handcraft. You know, you want to have turbo motors automated for sure. Uh, we'll need a lot of turbo motors, but I, I wanted those two Mark III miners just for our two bauxite nodes. So I swapped the Mark IIs for the Mark III miners, and then I popped in two power shards in each, 
and I clock them up so they're producing 780 or they're, they're mining 780 pieces of bauxite ore every minute. That will fully fill the, the Mark V belts. And then I just um, replaced all the Mark IV belts with Mark V belts on the, the ground floor and between the, the miners and the stations. Okay, so we're here on the second floor. We have um, our alkali aluminum sheets. We're going to turn these into heat sinks. Let's take a look at the recipe. We're using the alternate recipe that we unlocked. Uh, the original recipe is... I don't know why it says this. Maybe we're using the standard recipe? The, I, okay, this is definitely... This is mislabeled. This is a bug. This is the standard recipe here with rubber. This is the alternate recipe with um, copper sheets. And this is the one that we'll be using. It uh, produces more per minute. You get uh, many more heat sinks per uh, aluminum sheet, and you don't need a ton of rubber. That's an interesting bug. I will make a note to report that. Okay. So let's see how many heat things were, or how many alkali sheets we're producing per minute. 30 per um, assembler, and we've got 10 assemblers. That's 300 per minute. Um, I believe we're only setting up five assemblers worth of heat sinks. Mm, let's see what's the best way to do this. Like this, I guess. Doesn't really matter. This is fine. We'll just line it up with these assemblers, but allow some space. I'm just thinking because we're going to have five assemblers and then another five manufacturers making um, the radio control units. So. Let's place our window so we see where the radio control units are being uh, belted up. Right here. This is where the crystals will come down and the radio control units will go up. Okay. So both of these windows relate to radio control units. The crystals are part of the radio control units. Let's grab a manufacturer. Okay. These are so big. We probably need to go like all the way up here. We've only got three items, so we don't need a ton of space. That should be good. We could even go up one more if we had to. Let's go up one more. Yeah, so we're just going to kind of work backwards here, starting with radio control units and then backwards to the heat sink, just so the spacing is as good as it can be. Two, three, four, and five. This is the recipe for, uh, here we go, alternate radio control system, requires heat sinks, supercomputers, quartz crystals. Probably, this is always the best way to do it, right? Um, I guess we'll 
we'll start at this end. So we've got the, the, the heat sinks coming from this direction, from the east, and the supercomputers and, and crystals will come from the west. Two more. Set up our lifts. I forgot which belt is which here. Is our, I don't think our train's returned yet. Oh, it has, good. We've got crystals on the south. Using Mark Fives now, that's great. So this, will be, this is the crystals coming down, and this will be where the radio control units go up. So, radio control units merging here. Because I shifted the train stations, I just had to shift this belt of um, copper ingots over to the north here. And we'll pull this around. Loose is on the on this side, right?
So we'll just fix the angle a little bit. Recipes. Get the radio control system. Okay. While we're here, let's, let's go ahead and Set these up. I think the top belt will be crystals. I really need probably some uh, conveyor poles here somewhere. Right? Second belt will be supercomputers. Okay. So supercomputers. Let's see if we can identify which belt they're on. belt. So, no. the middle belt. Okay, looks like this. It's the left port here. So, yeah, it's not great. Maybe we can adjust it a little bit. Let's try going higher. That's that's definitely gonna clip. Okay. Let's bring it over here. Oh, Auto save. We've got the crystals, we've got the supercomputers. Now we just need the heat sinks. And so we want the heat sinks to be outputting to the south. 
Okay, one thing to consider is we also want our excess um, alkaline aluminum sheets to be um, transported back to the station storage hub. So let's just put down five assemblers. Let's, let's try them right here, maybe. Could even go. line this up. It'll be two lines, because we're going to have copper sheets as well. How much room does that give us? Like all the way up here? That's pretty tight. Yeah. Let's, let's just uh, move this belt back and center these a little bit more. set of jet fuel as well. If you're using the outpost salad building, I highly recommend, you know, just before you start an outpost, if it's going to be a big project, just bring in, you know, a nice supply of all the basic ingredients out with you so that you're not forced to um, to run back to your your main base your main like depot halfway through a project big time saver even with hyper tubes space really nicely. So let's look at the recipe. The um, All this is basically just to facilitate the automation of turbo motors, which you need for Mark III miners. And um, the standard recipe uses um, radio control units, heat sinks, motors, rubber, to make one turbo motor um, every, I guess, every 40 seconds or something. Uh, I chose definitely not to do this because the, the amount of rubber is huge, right? Also, uh, heat sinks. You need a ton of heat sinks. Or, uh, more heat sinks, rather. Which means uh, you have fewer alkaline aluminum sheets to you know use for actually replacing your belts. So I think this is one of the few alternate recipes that is really, really worth using. Uh, you still use motors, you still use radio control units, uh, but the um, the heat sinks are swapped out for AI limiters, of which we have we have tons, and uh, the rubber is swapped out for stators. You know we and we accounted for that in our motor factory, and I think it also produces like like three instead of one, so it's like almost three a minute, which is more efficient. It's like more efficient in terms of resources required and also, you know, output per minute. And uh, that seems to be like an exception, not the rule for the, the revamped alternate recipes. So we'll put, well, it doesn't matter, we'll just put the alkaline aluminum sheets on the bottom here.
back when I'm doing the sheets. So once these, once this belt has fed the, um, you know, I should, I should just do the, the better looking method here of, you know, splitters. So once this belt is fed, the assemblers making heat sinks will continue it down. I guess I need to go up three for this, right? Those sheets, I think they're going uh, right here. It's going to be kind of hard. We'll probably just put them on the top, I guess. Maybe we'll belt them around the wall. I like that idea. Seems the cleanest thing. Is this the right height? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe we can bring the um, the copper sheets along the wall too. Although <laughs> uh, we should have put the, um, the aluminum sheets on top, I guess. We can fix it. It's fine. take all this way, and then we'll just flip the placement. It's a bummer.
So one more time. Is that aligned? Yep. Getting faster. the excess will go over to the west wall to be lifted up to our outgoing train. This is copper sheets. Let's take those along the wall. I can just use the uh, the mounts above to check the placement. Okay. Uh, also between the episodes, I did replace one of the copper miners with a, with a Mark III miner. That was the copper miner making ingots for, um, strictly for uh, copper sheets. And then I upgraded all those belts from Mark, I think they were actually Mark III belts up to Mark V. And that slightly boosted our copper sheet throughput, but I still believe I'll need to convert some of the copper wire constructors to copper sheets. That hasn't been done yet, but I think it's going to be required. Okay, uh, recipes. Heat exchanger. See here it listed it lists the heat exchanger as the alternate. But in the recipes menu it lists this as the standard. Heat exchanger. Set up our outputs. Let's put them in line with the inputs for the uh, manufacturers.
now all that's left is to power these up. Let's put a wall up right in the center. Heat sinks are in business. Now we'll need to power up manufacturers. Let's say this is the center right about here. These things are so big. <laughs> How did that happen? Somehow I put a uh, power pole on the roof there. really like these wall nubs. It's just a lot cleaner than having to stretch, you know, power poles across the length of your floors. Okay. So we should be producing heat sinks here. Oh yeah, we are. into the radio control units pretty slowly. Do we hook the outputs up to the wall? Okay, yep. Yeah. So let's head to the roof. Did I do this math right? Got 12.5 per minute times 5 is 62.5. Yeah, 62.5 heat sinks per minute. And using the alternate recipe, we're producing 13.1 per minute. Okay, so we're, we're producing more than is required. That's fine. No. So this needs to catch up a little bit. So to the roof. We got one more thing I'd like to do this episode. It's the last automation process. Well, I guess next to last. I still want to do batteries. Batteries will be the next episode. Let's see. This is our outgoing train, right? It don't, doesn't look like it collected any outbound aluminum sheets. 
Oh, we don't have the lift hooked up yet. That would be why. Now we'll have a decent supply of alkaline aluminum sheets accumulating in the storage hub. We are slowly building up a stack of radio control units. Let's check the read on that. Uh, you know, again, they've got the standard and alternate recipes mixed up. Uh, producing at a rate of 3.75 per minute times 5 manufacturers, that's 18.75 per minute. Uh, turbo motors, we're using the alternate. Okay, so four. We're going to have four manufacturers making turbo motors. Let's queue that up. have any plastic. Or enough, okay. We'll pick that up at the storage hub. Get some jet fuel too. the geothermals below. I think I hooked up all 18 on the map. They produce 200 megawatt hours of electricity each. So it's like 3.6 gigawatts. Yeah. And that I added to the power grid. I still want to go ahead and, and double the number of fuel generators. Uh, because once we upgrade to, you know, all of these miners, we probably got 30, 30 ish miners, right? Somewhere around there. I would say probably 30, maybe 35. Once those are all upgraded to Mark 3s, and then we go through and upgrade all of the belts, like every single one of the belts to, um, to a Mark 5. Not all of them will need Mark Vs, but the, the vast majority will need to be upgraded to Mark Vs. Uh, you know, then all of our machines will be kicking on again, and the power requirements are really going to spike. Okay, so what do we need? Plastic. Oh, nice. Take that. Get some jet fuel. My fuel. Yeah, I'm almost down. Okay. I haven't unlocked the hazmat suit or nuclear power. They're not big priorities for me. Uh, you know, I'm not using nuclear in this playthrough. 
I don't like nuclear because it, um, there's no way to automate the, the waste disposal. You know, you have to just, you can, like, you can transport it far away from your base, but that's cheesy, I don't like that. You can't put it into an item sink. So, I know, I know it produces a ton of energy, uh, but I don't like the trade-off of not being able to dispose of the waste in a significant way, like a permanent way. Uh, way that is sustainable. Okay, this is the motor factory. This is a, a very large floor. <laughs> it's only going to be filled with um, four manufacturers. That's cool. Um, okay, let's decide where the items are coming from, right? The lowest we've got are motors. Uh, stators as well. We need to split those lines off the motors and the stators and we'll probably just you know have the cup in the center like around here I guess. Or we could have them over here closer. Why don't we just say the like right here. Then we also um, need AI limiters coming in from above and the um, radio control units. Let's go up to the roof. I'm pretty sure that AI limiters are already being delivered. As of now, this is the only outpost that I've, you know, completely roofed in. Yeah, limiter is great. Okay. So, there over here. Now, this is the train that will be receiving, or the station that will be receiving, radio control units. Already got 15 here. All right. This is Is this belt unused? Oh, okay. So I just I set that up to pull from the station. That makes sense. Place those with Mark Fives. Yeah, that's good. So we'll have the A-limiters and the radio control units in the same window. So we'll have a double window here. AI limiters. Radio control units. And then we need to go down to the floor below. And split off our um, stators. 
and uh, motors. So we'll say like right here. Okay, that's where I put it. So when I was um, planning the production numbers for this factory, I planned ahead that we would have extra motors and stators. Let's see, I don't want, I want a splitter. Put motors there. Staters over as well. Just do this. And staters. Back up to the second floor. Let's see if we can knock this out in about five minutes. Okay, the only other thing to consider is um, where these will output. This is the incoming, so this is the uh, outgoing station over here. Yeah. So maybe we'll output right here. So why don't we move this, this window up, or even have two windows. So I said two windows because uh, I want to use the wall to go around and we'll need those to be above. So we'll put this one in the lower window. And this on the upper. Get out our wall mounts. Good. Okay, now we can have all four right here. 
Let's see if we can manage this. It's pretty good. Give it a little bit of space. We can space these out a little bit. It's uh, probably up here. This, that'd be ideal, right? But that may not be possible. I think that that should be that should work. Let's try it. And then we'll just repeat that three times. Space right between here. So I guess the ne next episode uh, will be like the final episode of the series. Uh, we'll be automating the batteries and then just taking a look, you know, just like a quick recap of all of the various outposts. I will have them all finished completely. All the pillars will be done. And I'm going to make a real effort to bust out the color gun 
and um, you know just farm a ton of flowers just a, a crazy amount of flowers and um, paint all of these outposts paint the walls of all the outposts um, in a way uh, that you can you know just like look at the outpost and know which outpost it is Not because I think it's necessary, but I think it's, you know, just a cool thing to do. But, uh, that'll take a while. I also want to, um, do a, like a few more visual things, just, you know, uh, enclosing all of the train stations for the outposts, so that all of the, um, outposts, like, have a roof over the train station on top, and then I'll probably put um, a radio tower on each of them. I think that looks cool. I think it's a, a cool idea. But uh, all that's going to take some time, I would expect. Several days between this episode and the next. Depending on how much time I have to grind all of that out. I'll go ahead and double the, um, the turbo generators. We get the full 120 fuel generators as well. And then I think I want to set up like some sort of like vehicle fueling station. Where, you know, after we automate the production of batteries, the batteries are delivered to the storage hub. And um, then you can just have, like have a truck station at the storage hub, probably on the, the ground level where, um, you know, the hub is. Where any vehicles, you can just, you know, um, uh, direct them to that, that battery station, the storage hub, if they're automated, and they can, uh, they'll, you know, they'll, they'll be filled with batteries to power them. I'm not using any vehicles right now, but, you know, I could, there are scenarios where you definitely could especially out here in the desert where there's uh, a lot of empty space. Oh man, okay. Well, we're gonna end the episode here because I'm out of aqua aluminum sheets. Uh, but uh, this is basically it, you know? We've done a ton in this series. Uh, in this episode we automated heat sinks and radio control units and turbo motors and um, you know hope you guys have enjoyed as much as I have hit the like button subscribe to the channel we've got more content coming in the future and I'll see everyone after the break in a few days a lot of work until then <laughs>